So Tim, we're here looking at some microwave technology and microwave technology is used for perimeter protection uh, in certain applications. Can you tell us a little bit about the technology? Sure. Yeah, a microwave motion intrusion detection device simply detects motion moving within the field. Um, you see here we've got some stack sensors, mm -hmm. uh, but this is what our microwave sensors look like. Gotcha. Um, in contrast to a passive infrared device, this is an active mm -hmm. volumetric field, meaning the microwave energy is 360 degrees. It is an active field that can detect movement or changes within that field. Okay, and, and most of the time, for most of our applications, we utilize one unit at about three foot. But we do have some applications where utilities, prisons, airports, they need a little bit higher security. So what would we do in that application? Sure, uh, we always base our system designs, whether it be the fence system, the buried system, or microwaves, off of the threat definition. Gotcha. You know, what are you trying to detect Right. so we can lay them out in the appropriate way? Mm -hmm. So a single microwave head, like you said, installed about 36 inches or roughly three feet high, is intended to detect a hands and knees crawling target, a walking target, a running target, and a jumping target. Okay. So for those three types of intrusion detections, single head, it's perfect. Okay. For the higher security sites, mm -hmm. we start to get into the belly crawler type target, the intelligent okay. intruder. If gotcha. your threat definition calls for an intruder that knows what they're looking at when they see a single right. microwave head, they know that if they lay flat on their belly mm -hmm. and they face the transmitter receiver, there's a greater potential that they could get through without being detected. Okay. If All that's right. part of the threat definition, we had a sensor on the bottom. Okay. So we put that one about 12 inches nominal, mm -hmm. and uh, this guy ensures detection of the prone crawler or the sniper crawl trying right. to get through the microwave zone. Okay. Now, what about this guy? Well, this one's a special case. So in most cases, for the higher security sites, a double stack is good. Mm -hmm. However, in some cases, they may have two fences. The microwaves may be in a clear zone, a dog run right. between these two fences, and there's a potential for someone to bridge across. Uh, so if okay. someone's bridging across, or if the threat definition calls for a bridging or assisted jumping mm -hmm. target, say you have the Cirque du Soleil type, yep. where the little guy runs and the bigger guy gives him a boost right. and he jumps over. Or in those rare cases, you know, we get a guy with a pole vault. So he may pole vault and try to jump over the zone okay. that way. These are real threats. Wow. Okay. If that's the case, we take the third head and mm -hmm. we place it in the location where we provide best potential of detection. Okay. So if you have two fences that are eight feet tall, mm -hmm. maybe a ladder going across, we'll put this guy right at eight feet. Okay. And that way we put that intruder right through the path of the beam. All right, so we got our, our low threat, medium threat or medium height threat, now our higher threat. So that's why we're stacking three of these units now at this point for, again, higher threat detection. Sure. What are some of the things we got to look at, though, with the actual microwaves? Like, uh, are they all the same type or are they different type of technologies? Sure, and those are really good questions and something that we definitely need to address with mm -hmm. the users. Um, when we stack the microwaves, typically this can either be a K-band or an X-band sensor. Okay. In most cases, it's an X-band sensor. Uh, our 334 digital microwave or the 300B analog microwave, uh, that's common. Okay. When we're gonna start stacking the units, we have to take into consideration the weather, mm -hmm. rain, sleet, hail, grass growing, things like that, okay. when we start putting sensors very close to the ground. Gotcha. So on the bottom, we use a K-band sensor, either a Model 310B analog microwave mm -hmm. or the 336 advanced digital microwave. What and does the K do differently than the X-band? Sure, yeah, I was, <laughs> okay. I was just gonna get into that. The, uh, the K-band on the bottom, because it is a higher frequency, this is 10 and change gigahertz, that's 24 and change gigahertz. Okay. Uh, what happens is the rain comes down, it splashes on the ground and splashes back up. Okay. So not only do you get rain down, you get pooling and you get splash back. This guy on the bottom is much more resistant to interference from water droplets. Okay. The signal is attenuated less, there's less uh, chance of reflection, refraction from those okay. water droplets, and so it's a much more reliable sensor in those situations. Gotcha. So we got a K-band down at the bottom because, mm -hmm. again, application driven. Yep. Now if these are both X-bands, what do we have to do there to make sure we don't have issues of crosstalk and things sure. of that nature. Well, the carrier frequency is the same between all of our X-band microwaves, okay. and it is the same between all of our K-band microwaves, mm -hmm. uh, but we do use offset channels. So channel A, B, C, and D okay. in the analog, and channel A, B, C, D, E, and F in the digital microwaves. Okay. So in these zones, when we're stacking the microwaves, we always recommend that the zone be tuned to the same channel. So mm -hmm. if this is zone one, these would all be on channel A. Okay. How we mitigate interference between the middle head and the upper head yep. in the same unit is we take one of these heads and we rotate it 90 degrees. 
Okay. The reason we rotate that 90 degrees is because the microwave signal is projected in a horizontal pattern. When we rotate at 90, that rotates that pattern to a vertical, and the oscillation chamber, mm -hmm. with a horizontal pattern coming towards a vertical oscillation chamber, it's impossible for those to interfere with each other. Gotcha. So this is for polarization. Mm -hmm. One is vertically polarized, one is horizontally polarized, Okay. and now it's impossible for them to interfere. Gotcha. And as an installer, once you do this, you are going to then move the rain shield back up to the top. So again, from the front, you have the protection. What other maintenance do we need to do to these microwave units to make sure that they're going to work for years and years? Sure. Well, years and years and years, to be <laughs> honest. Um, we have microwaves that have been in the field for more than 30 years that are still chugging along. And the reason they are is because the maintenance was done appropriately. Okay. So the key maintenance is to keep the face of the radome clean Okay. and to keep the face of the radome shiny. We want this supple, we want it moisturized, and we want rain to bead and fall off. What would we use for that? So I mean, turtle wax is, is ideal. Really? Wax the radomes. Okay. If you wax the face uh, quarterly, that would be ideal. Okay. Some people can't do that. Uh, we do have a hydrophobic radome mm -hmm. that requires no maintenance for two full years. So okay. if the budget didn't call for turtle wax and maintenance time polishing all the heads, you could simply use a hydrophobic uh, radome and replace them every two years. Very simple, very easy, and okay. much less time consuming and much more budget friendly than doing that. Gotcha. However, most customers do wax them. They choose to just wax the radome. It's very easy, it's very quick. Just do a quick buff, make mm -hmm. sure it's shiny, and it's good to go. Uh, second, like you mentioned earlier, we want this rain bill on top. Right. Because if water is sitting on the face of this mm -hmm. microwave, that's going to attenuate the signal. Okay. And believe it or not, this little rain bill, some people call it an eyebrow, this little rain bill, <laughs> when it's on top, it actually does prevent the water from sitting on the face right. of the microwave. So, second to that, there's two drip holes. So ah. if moisture does build up inside here, it these will. two drip holes on the side, they weep the moisture out. So okay. the moisture can fall out the bottom of these. If you leave the radome sideways, they'll fill up with water. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So this we is don't important. Want that. <laughs> when you rotate the head, take the radome off, rotate it back and reinstall okay. it. Wax the face of the radomes, do a visual inspection, and that's about it. And since these are by static units, what is the range and distance we can get on some of these? Sure. The maximum range on the X-band model so is 600 feet. The okay. maximum range on the K-band models is 1,500 feet. Wow. So these are very long-range sensors. Okay. However, we base the zones on CCTV requirements. So rather than have a 1,500-foot zone and trying sure. to view that zone with a camera, uh, that's nearly impossible to yeah. determine what's taking place. We recommend much shorter zones. Okay. Typically, at a high security site, if they're stacking the microwaves, we're going to recommend 100 meter zones at a max. Okay. Yeah. All right.